speed, Captain. You have a box. Two for one. That's why we have fire team. I would tear out a Vex heart with my teeth. I would sear the Cabal with my burning light, challenge the fallen Kells to personal combat and scatter them. Ladies and gents, my name is Xander, aka Deicide, and in this video, we're going to discuss some god roll perks that you guys have got to have on your weapons, in particular that of the spare rations and the high impact frame pulse rifles, specifically the Rerex's broadsword and the Einstein D. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, I understand why we want to cover the spare rations, because that thing just got a fantastic drop rate, and not just that, it's an incredible weapon that can do some crazy good things in PvP as well as PvE. But what about that of the Rerex's broadsword and the Einstein D? Why is it that I should care as to whether or not those things are good or bad? Because currently, their art type is complete muff cabbage trash shenanigans. To you, my friends, I say that can the Shadow Keep DLC, they are getting a buff. And although I don't think that they're going to become quote unquote meta, they're certainly going to become more viable. And depending on the rule that you might get, that's where things get extremely interesting. And so we're going to cover all this in just a couple of seconds. Before I cover that stuff, I just want to go back to the spare rations very, very briefly and let everybody know that the drop rate has now been increased for Gambit Prime and the Reckoning Tier 2 and Tier 3. So if you guys want to try and get that thing, make sure that you do so when Oryx is the boss, as that's when the spare rations will be in the loot pool and we'll have two ways of getting that thing via the Reckoning and Gambit Prime. And now as to see some other scrumptious and oh so delightful roles in these beauties, the only thing left to do is still eviscerate the notification button and let's jump right into video. First of all, I just want to say thank you Bungie for finally making all these Season of Opulence weapons drop that much faster, at least in the Reckoning and Gambit Prime, because these things have some very unique and intrinsic perks that can only be found on these particular weapons, and that's what makes them so highly sought after. Speaking of exclusivity, this is what brings me to my very first roll on the spare rations, and what I want to show you is this roll right there, and this one just so happens to have Full bore, ricochet rounds, rapid hit, and range finder with an additional plus 10 range for its masterwork. The key reasoning why I love this roll so much is because this thing right here can literally have more effective range than the Ace of Spades, and the Ace of Spades is an exotic. Taking one step back, I want you to remember as to exactly what I said there, and that is effective range. The roll in the spare rations that I just mentioned and suggested is not going to have a higher base range than that of the Ace of Spades, as the Ace of Spades will still be higher. But the reason why I want you to have this roll with Ricochet Rounds and Range Finder is because those things increase the weapon's overall zoom factor whenever you're aiming down sights. What these perks don't tell you is that this zoom factor is then going to simultaneously increase the range even more so. And so when you couple all these things together, this spare rations with full bore, ricochet rounds, rapid hit, range finder, and a plus 10 range masterwork is going to get the weapon more effective range than that beautiful and glorious Ace of Spades. The only other thing that I want to say about this roll is that the reason why I like rapid hit so much is because it's going to give you that increase in stability and reload speed combined, which is pretty much like combining Zen Moment and Outlaw together into one perk, and thus you get the best of both worlds. But if you don't happen to get that best RNG luck, then maybe something like Snapshot Sights is going to be fantastic as that's going to make the weapon that much snappier. Now that you kind of understand my thought process and logic and reasoning behind that first roll, the second roll that I like to have you guys look for on the spare rations is the one that you can see right there on screen. And it's almost identical to the first one, and the only difference being in that fourth column where instead of having Rangefinder, we have Multi-Kill Clip. Now let it be known that there is not a single other hand can in the entire game that can roll with Multi-Kill Clip. And so as soon as you happen to get this spare rations with multi-kill clip in general, it then becomes a very, very unique weapon. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of unique weapons, I've done an entire video describing all that kind of stuff and the difference between them, say within unique rules, god rules, and curator rules, and so I'll link that in the top right hand corner of your screen this very second. With that, I want to go back to multi-kill clip. Now, the reason why I adore this marvelous, spectacular, and oh so stupendous perk is because as soon as you happen to get two kills and then reload, this beauty can two tap, and it can do so by doing 98 points of damage in the head, and with that, you're then going to get an optimal TTK at 0.4 seconds. Yes, my friends, you hear me right, I said 0.4 seconds, which is just mind-boggling, as one of the fastest TTKs in the entire game, 
tie with that, might I add, with the Recluse when it happens to have its Master of Arms perk proct. If you thought that perk was good, just think about the synergy between that beauty and Rapid Hit. And so these two perks combined are then going to have some marvelous synergy because one is then going to help proc the other, while at the same time, you're still going to get that increase in stability. And that then means that you're going to get more crits, be able to proc Rapid Hit, thus proccing multi kill clip, and in the process, get those oh so spectacular two taps, make enemy guardians a little bit salty. Now I realize that many of us may not have the best RNG in the world, so that's why I want to show you guys this screen right there with all the perks that I would recommend for you to try and get on this thing. And the whole logic and reasoning behind all this stuff is to one, increase the weapon's lethality by pretty much that fourth and final column, but you also might be able to increase the weapon's range with those perks or just simply increase the weapon's overall consistency. As far as that first and second column of perks goes, we're pretty much just looking for anything that's going to increase the weapon's overall effective range, and that's exactly what all those perks are going to do. As far as that third column goes, well, we're pretty much looking for something that's going to increase the weapon's reload speed, and in this case, that's what Rapid Hit and Field Prep are going to do, but like I said from earlier, Snapshot is still a very, very good viable option, just depending on the role that you guys are looking for. With this, I think that you guys now have a very solid comprehension as to what you should be looking for on the spare rations and why it should be so. So the very next thing that we absolutely have to discuss is these high impact frame pulse rifles and understand that they come shadow keep are getting their critical damage buff to go from 33 to 34 points of damage per crit and for their body shot damage it's going to go from 20 to 22. Taking one step back you might be thinking to yourself okay well why exactly is this going to make that big of a difference? To you I say it might and it might not. It could be the best thing in the world and it could mean absolutely nothing at all. It doesn't mean that these things are going to become meta, it doesn't mean that they're not. It just simply means that they could potentially to pursue more consistently if you happen to have the right types of perks, and we're going to get into this right now. The primary high impact frame pulse rifle that everyone should be taking note of is of course the Rerex's broadsword, and that's because this beauty right here always is going to come with it having Outlaw and Desperado. And so as soon as you happen to get one kill, thus procking Outlaw, you're then going to proc Desperado, and that's going to give the weapon an increase in rate of fire from its 340 to 600 rounds per minute. That right there alone is craziness, and it's what makes the weapon so powerful. But what about the weapon's other perks? Right here on screen, you'll see them focusing simply on that second column of perks first, and what's highlighted is high caliber rounds along with ricochet rounds. Both of these two perks are going to give the weapon a plus 5 in the weapon's range, but as far as their similarities go, this is the end of the line, and their differences now occur, because with high caliber rounds, this is then going to give the weapon a ton of flinch factor. And just keep in mind that as soon as you happen to have Desperado active, once again, you're going to be able to fire this thing at 600 rounds per minute, and thus have an incredible amount of flinch. On the other hand, we also have Ricochet Rounds, and Ricochet Rounds is going to give that plus 5 in range simultaneously with a plus 10 stability, but what you also have to take into account is that it's going to once again increase that zoom factor, thus increasing the weapon's range even more so. No matter how that you look at this thing, either one of these perks is exactly what you're looking for. But if you were to ask me, I'm 110% going to go with high caliber rounds or ricochet rounds, as I want that flinch factor to be astronomically high, so then my enemy guardians are going to have more of a chance to miss their shots, while I then have more chances to land my shots and thus get plenty of multi-kills. Now if you want to get even more multi-kills, annihilating, decimating, and obliterating guardians, you have to look at that first column of perks. And the ones that I recommend to you here is Arrowhead Break, Chamber Compensator, and Extended Barrel. The reason why I say this is because each one of these three perks is going to increase the weapon's recoil direction to be over that of 100, either by itself or in conjunction with a counterbalance mod. Keep in mind that a counterbalance mod always increases the weapon's recoil direction by plus 15. And when you happen to have Chamber Compensator or that of Extended Barrel, each one of those two things is then going to increase the weapon's recoil direction by plus 10, thus giving the weapon's base stat recoil direction to be at 100 out of 100. When this is the case, we're then going to have a weapon that's going to have almost a vertical recoil direction and no lateral side to side movement at all. And this is exactly what we're looking for on these types of pulse rifles, because if you happen to miss even one of your shots, that's when this weapon is going to require at least another whole burst unless the weapon's TTK factor goes so high that you can probably go to the moon and back. You don't want that, I don't want that, nobody wants that, and so that's why we want to have that high recoil direction to be at 100 out of 100. 
But what I want to go back to just very, very briefly is that Arrowhead Break is actually going to give the weapon a plus 30 in the weapon's recoil direction, and thus you're not going to need a counterbalance mod. And so if you happen to get that perk, then you're going to have a wide variety of options to then use for that mod, something maybe like a targeting adjuster to increase the aim assistance ever so slightly more, and thus have that much more of a consistent weapon to get that two bursting potential. In seeing all the broadswords perks, I think that you guys are now fully prepared as to what you should be looking for when Shadowkeep actually does drop. But once again, this is only one weapon, and so what I want to do now is I want to take a look at a secondary weapon, the Eins 9D, that is in precisely the exact same R-type as the Broadsword. But in this case, we're going to have some very, very different perk options here that could make the weapon even more lethal than that of the Broadsword. And to find this out, we're going to take a look at all the weapon's perks and specifically the ones that I would recommend for ideal combinations. First up, we got in that fourth column, Rampage, the third column, Rangefinder, the second column, Ricochet Rounds, and that first column, any medium zoom or low zoom scope that's really going to make the weapon that much more universal for a wide variety of playstyles. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves, okay, well, why exactly are you recommending Rampage and not Kill Clip in conjunction with, say, someone like Rangefinder and Ricochet Rounds? To you, my friends, I say that with Ricochet Rounds and Rangefinder, you're then going to have two perks that are going to increase the weapon's effective range significantly. But then when you couple this with, say, Rampage, you're then going to be able to continuously fire the weapon's magazine without having to reload and still get the damage buff from Rampage. And that then is exactly what you want to use this thing for, for those mid and longer range engagements, to potentially two burst them easier and maybe even one burst them. I can't really quite confirm that yet, as Shadowkeep still hasn't arrived, but just keep in mind that is still a very, very high potential. Of course, you all know that Rampage can stack once, twice, and three times, increasing the damage output every single time that it does so with each stack. But something that might be able to actually one burst you come Shadow Keep even more effectively than this is my secondary role, and this role consists of Kill Clip, Outlaw, High Caliber Rounds, and the exact same sights as before. With this particular role, you're going to be able to get that very first kill, hopefully with that two burst, and then thus that's then going to give you that critical headshot being able to proc kill clip that much faster, and when this is the scenario, you're going to be able to do incredible and out of this world damage that, like I said from before, could potentially one burst somebody, and when you couple this with, say, high caliber rounds, you're going to be able to flinch the enemy guardians just the same way that you were with having, say, the Red Rex's broadsword. Now, if one of the two roles that I just mentioned really isn't your cup of tea, then something that you might be looking for instead is something that's going to be much more consistent. And a perfect example of this is something like the role that you guys see right there. And that includes Zen Moment, Moving Target, Flare of Magwo, and once again, the same size as before. With this particular role, you're going to have Zen Moment, and that's then going to give you very good overall stability to land more critical headshots. But then when you combine this with, say, Moving Target, you're then going to once again increase that weapon's overall aim assistance, and thus compound the effects of Zen Moment getting more critical headshots. Lastly, you then have Flare of Magwell, and what's beautiful about this perk is that not only is it going to increase that stability, once again getting more overall critical headshots, but it's thus going to get the weapon a much faster reload speed. And so clearly, you guys can really see as to why this thing's going to have some great perk synergy, making it an extremely consistent weapon. Taking all these rolls into account on the Einstein D, I want to put them together just so that you guys can see all the perks that I recommend, and thus we can see this right there on screen. Now, there may be some other perks that you might prefer over one or the other, but if you were to ask me, these are the perks that I think make the most logical sense. And so you don't have to just apply this for something like, say, the Einstein D, but you could apply this for all the other types of high-impact frame pulse rifles that could be coming out in Shadowkeep. We don't know as to how much overall damage that these pulse rifles are going to do with something like, say, Rampage, Kill Clip, maybe even Multi-Kill Clip, and when these are the circumstances, Maybe some one bursting could be in our future, but we can't say for sure until, of course, Shadow Keep comes out. And having said that, I think that you guys now have a very clear vision as to what exactly that you should be looking for on not just the spare rations, but other high impact frame pulse rifles come this Shadow Keep DLC. Let me know what you guys think about this stuff. Do you think that these pulse rifles are going to be the next meta? Do you think that the spare rations is going to be the most godly among godly hand cannons? Or do you think a new one's going to come out in the DLC that's going to make all other hand cannons irrelevant? Whether any of these things are actually going to come true, only time will tell, my friends. But no matter what you guys say, 
You always know that I'm going to respect your opinion, and that is something I can guarantee. Lastly, be sure to watch the newest, check the latest, and share a comment like on social media because you are the greatest. That's pretty much all that I've got for you as of right now, DS Layers. And as always, GG DNT.